Okay, everybody, John here. First, I'm going to show you some. Here's two crystal batteries that we manufactured. And these are plastic tops. So the material is sealed inside here and it's crystalline. This is using lead. Using the lead plates after being formed. And so our standing voltage is about right there. And we're also graphing this chart. And what we want to do is we want to run this out and see what the discharge curve actually looks like. That's very important. Then I'm going to show you where I'm going to mix it. And I want you to figure it out. I'm not going to give you the exact formula because it's your experimentation on doing the battery the same as it's mine. And you should be able to figure this out, what's going on with this cell. So, I'm only drawing a current of about, oh, four or five milliamps, just to see. And here's the LED. And I've got it limited, because I want to run a curve. I want to run a C20 curve. So I want to see what's going to go on with this cell. And uh, Chuck and I will be right back. Okay, I'm, I'm back here after a little bit of time, and you can see our discharge curve now on these crystal cells. This is exactly what I wanted to see impedance-wise. I want to see a slight curve to where the battery holds, and that's exactly what it's doing, 3.786. So if you divide that by 2, you'll know what each cell is. Okay? So if you take the 3 point seven eight five and divide that by two you'll have one point eight volt okay now I've said to you before and I'll say it one more time the charging impedance is far different than the discharge impedance and this is an example of it and you can see as it discharges in here in these crystals the water is accumulating at the top. So it's the same exact charge and discharge rate as a lead acid battery, except it's moving a different chemical back and forth ammonium aluminum sulfate. Okay? There's no problem with this battery at all because it can keep this up for hours. Anyway, we're going to make one. And I'll be right back. Okay. So as you can see, I've got the plates here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these plates together. And I'm going to saturate this with this crystal that I've grown. And this is actually uh, an Elm solution. But now I've found a way to crystallize this so that I can make a paste out of it. And that's exactly what I want to do. Because as this chemical moves back and forth, what's going to happen here is it's going to get rid of water and then suck in water. And this is all chemistry, everybody. And so, you know, everybody on these forms should have been able so far to figure out, because we've all used these chemicals over and over and over. All right, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to put these together, so I'm going to paste these and I'll come back and show you. Then I'm going to strap them together with the same lead so that we can combine, make a much high current cell here. More current yet. And I'll be back. So what I've done is I've taken this and I've pasted it on. The next thing you want to do is saturate the insulator in L. So here is the crystal placed on the plate on one side. And since we're going to use four, it's going to be on the other side too. So I'll be back as soon as I get this together. All right, anyway, here's a, about almost three quarters of a cup of water. 
And here's a third a cup of a bell. And I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to mix it around. And I keep mixing this until I have that amount in this cup. And it's pretty much dissolved. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these insulators right here that I've made out of paper towels and see they're thick. And I'm going to saturate this and then place that on the plate. And I'm going to get all this together. And then Chuck and I are going to grow this crystal in front of you. And we're going to fill the box and seal it up. And we'll be back. You can see that I'm pasting the plates together. Now I've got two. And now what I'm going to do is saturate this. And lay that on there. Just like that. I'll be back. Okay. So when I get done pasting this, you saw me paste this. This is what I'm going to have. Now I'm going to bridge these together with lead. And then I'm going to create this cell. Now this will have double the current of the other cell once it's formed. Remember, the sulfation's on the plates. And even though you think you get it off, you don't. So this is going to combine with the plate as it moves the alum chemical back and forth which will neutralize what's ever on the plate. So, you can look for a pH level above 3 because of the way the alum is here being mixed. Alright, so anyway, I'll be back. Alright, in the end, what you should have is something that looks like this. Lead bridges, small shrink tube, silicone, seal, and then you heat shrink this tubing. Now we're going to put this in the box this direction, but we're going to make this crystal in front of you first. So, Chuck's going to do that right now. Okay. There's your alum. Water. Water. And these are measured out in very precise measurements. Yeah. Mm -hmm the other clear liquid here. So we're going to mix the alum and the water first. All right. It's really important with chemicals that you... This is going to gel right in front of you. And we've talked about these chemicals. I've uh, been over this and over this on the Earthlake group many times. And, uh, of course, I've been accused of everything, talking in the third person and all that. And so you can watch here what's going to happen here. There you go. You're getting your crystal now. So Chuck's going to mix that, and we'll be back, and then we'll show you how we do this. All right, so I've applied my grown crystal in a matter of seconds down in the bottom. And then what we're going to do is place... You're going to have to bend these wires up here. You just bend them up over here. We'll be back. What we're going to do is just place this in there like that in the crystal. And then Chuck's going to put the crystal all the way around it. And then we'll be back and show you the forming of the cell. Anyway, we're back. Chuck's packing that and he's going to have to mix up some more. We're a little short on this one because this is a little bit different one. And so he's packing the crystal around it. And you can see it's on his hands. So it's not caustic, it's not going to burn you, it's not going to do anything. Once again, I'm going to mention, this is technical. So, you must have precise measurements when you do this. And 
in. I'm going to show you the foreman. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back here in between, and then we'll show you the foreman of that cell. Um, you can see our discharge curve is pretty darn flat. And this has been uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105 minutes so far. I'll be back. Okay, as I pointed out in the other two videos, what had to be done when you revive a gel cell and everything else, you have to reverse the charge. That's going to move the lead sulfation backwards. So you can see I'm hooking the positive to the negative and the negative to the positive. Now, you can see that I have a backwards current here and a backwards current in the current meter. See it going backwards? I haven't even touched this yet. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring this up to 1.5 amperes. See it? 1.5 at 3.1 volts and you're going to leave that there for a half hour in the backwards condition because you want to move the lead you must move the lead backwards with sulfated plates even though you washed them and soaked them and scrubbed them that sulfation is there and it's inside the plate the thing that you must remember about this is this is what you consider a base so see how the current's starting to come down so you must keep it at about 1.5 amps and you can hear the supply this doesn't want to be reversed so you you need a pretty big supply to do this is a 50 amp supply so it can do this easy with its regulation so we're going to leave it and we'll be back Okay, so now we're down to 1.3, and we're going to reverse this charge. So negative is going to go to negative now, and positive is going to go to positive. Okay, and you can see right away the amperage starts to decrease because we didn't touch the voltage. So now we're going to bring it down to 1 amp. about 1.1 there, 1 amp, and we're going to let this charge, and that's how you get the plates to operate, is by reversing them, so it's not that I haven't told you that in the last video, because I did, about reviving gel cells, if you didn't see that, then go back, now, I'll take you over here and show you some revived gel cells, these uh, have been all revived. The caps are off. Sulfuric acid's been added to them. And we'll hook up this light bulb. So you can see that they revived. Low beam. High beam. And then here's another one. And by the way, these haven't been charged for days, so we're just letting them sit. And there you go. Totally revived in the whole current. So it can be done if you do it correctly. Anyway, here's our curve. Our contour, now we're at 105. 120 because now it's changed scales almost uh, 145 minutes on these cells and they haven't really moved that much I would suspect that they're a little bit lower in power but they do sustain the current so I'll be back
and we'll check this other cell out. Okay, we're back over at the cell we just made, and you can see the current's been reduced now, so it's going downward, which means the, char the cell is charging upward. So the impedance looks pretty good here. So now I'm going to add a little bit more current to it. To about 3 volts. Because remember, I'm forming this. So there, there's your one amp. We'll be back to see where it, it's going down. So it's charging just fine. We'll be back. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes. You can see that there. And what I'm going to do is disconnect it and run a high-powered oscillator. And I want you to see the oscillator. I showed this at the uh, convention. It's going to run all these LEDs, and this is quite a heavy coil in there. And it's got a radiant oscillator. So, I'm going to remove the wires. And I'm going to hook them to the radiant oscillator. And there we go. So I'm really not goofing around here. I'm showing you exactly what to do and how you can do it and how you can have light if you need it and you can charge it for very little current. So this is moving the lead once again the other direction and that's what you want to do. You want to work this so that it expels the water out of the crystal and then attracts the water back into the crystal. And that's why this is sealed up the way it is and a couple of vent holes just to let the gases out and that's it that's all you do to do this so I'm going to let it sit there for a while and I'll come back but you can see this is quite a bit of light you can see it light up stuff And that's a radiant oscillator made with the SG coil. And all that information is on the energy science form. And so the next time I come back with a video, I'm going to develop a low light Tesla scalar charger, what they call the scalar charger. And I'll show you in low light how this thing works and how I really don't need a sunny day to charge this battery. So I'll be back. Okay. Next couple of videos, Chuck and I will be cutting these apart. And see, this is a much bigger plate. And we'll be showing you more current yet. We're going to get it up to at least 10 or 15 amp hour battery with a couple of plates. And of course, this one back here, it says it, 1951. And uh, like I said, these things can hold the power. You know, and I'll show you that with it by, by running this. And this one has not been played with ever since it was formed. And there's your light. So it does the same thing as a 12 volt battery. You know, it can start your car, can do all kinds of things, and it can run stuff for hours. Form that way. So we're going to cut one of these apart too, and show you what the plates look like inside it, so, you, so that there can be no error in what I told you. Okay, sorry I ran out of memory again. I had to. But there's your radiant oscillator still running on the cell we just made. And what I was going to show you was, what we're going to do is take one of these apart. And uh, I'll be back in just a second and I'll show you what the lead looks like. Okay. This is just the way I pulled it off the shelf. And you can see inside, these are not formed at all. So we're actually going to take this cell apart, pull the plates out, in another video and do it for you but meanwhile um, we're going to create another one of these cells 
and in the meantime you can see what our discharge curve is at C20 and this has now been almost 225 minutes on that curve and all we did was form these at very low current 300 milliamps the two of them together and these are the cells that uh, use the two plates but we found a way to make this crystal grow quickly and so what this crystal actually does is it's able to move the water in the base back and forth in the lattice structure without losing any of the water because you can see it's, it's on the top here so anyway I wanted to show you that I'll go back over here real quick and this was a very slight charge now let me hook this back up to the supply so you can see a charge Okay, so you can see right there the impedance of the cell. So it's going to charge on very low voltage and current here. 800 milliamps is not a lot for this kind of cell. So you can see it coming back down, so it didn't use much at all. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry I ran out of memory. Thanks for watching, and we'll do another video when we get the uh, scalar charger Tesla switch done, and uh, we take these other big batteries apart. Thanks for watching, and I'm glad I could do this. Have a good day.